You won't stop me from getting these logs through. My gun is pointed at your man's head. Now put your rifle down, or he'll be a long time dead. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel. Headquarters of the man called Paladin. Uh. Yes, who is it? Yes, hey, boy. Well, come in, hey, boy. No, can't open the door, Mr. Paladin. I'm his fool. Oh. All right. Wait a minute. Oh. Uh, see, Mr. Paladin? Good heavens, what's all that you're carrying? Baseball things. You remember you said you teach hey, boy, how to play baseball? Hey, uh, can I bring stuff in? Sit down? Well, yes, of course. Yes, uh... Oh, it's a great heavy mess learning to play baseball. <laughs> what on earth are all those things supposed to be, hey, boy? Bats. Bats? What do you think, Mr. Paladin? Well, it looks like you brought every kind of stick you could find. Oh, you saw. Uh, wide ones, skinny ones, fat ones. Hey, boy, I have many bats for players to choose from. Oh, I see. Hey, you saw. Uh, shall we get started, Mr. Paladin? Hey, boy, I want to tell all members of Chinese Imperial Dragon Club about your baseball. Uh, you take your bat now? No, no, not now. Hey, boy, I've got to finish packing. Oh, oh, you leave today? Well, yes, I thought you knew. Oh, to see Macy Mitchell in Washington Territory? That's right. Oh, hey, boy, I think you leave tomorrow. Well, you've been so busy buying up all that baseball equipment, you've lost track of the days. You want to help me finish packing? Yes, sir. So sorry, hey, boy, forgot. There'll be plenty of time for your baseball lessons when I get back. You'll have all winter to practice. Oh, uh, you think Imperial Dragon Club have good team by springtime? <laughs> if they're as interested as you are, it should be one of the best teams in San Francisco. Oh, very good. Uh, this make a, uh, hey, boy, very important man in club. Tastes good like a cigarette should. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Winston gives you real flavor, full, rich tobacco flavor. Winston's easy drawing too. The flavor comes right through to you. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. A modern filter? Sure, Winston has it. But that's only the beginning of a Winston. Up front. Up where it really counts, Winston packs exclusive filter blend. Light, flavorful tobaccos, specially selected and specially processed for filter smoking. Filter blend. That's why it's fun to smoke Winston, America's best-selling filter cigarette. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Elizabeth Mitchell had been in San Francisco attending a finishing school for young ladies when we met. We attended many parties together for a period of months. Then, during one of my absences, she left with no indication as to where she was going. Now, six months later, I had received a telegram from her saying that she was the owner of a logging camp near Palmer Junction in Washington Territory and that she needed me. I took a steamer to Seattle and there rented a horse for the ride into the Green River section of the Cascade Mountains. There was snow on the ground, and the air was strangely still as I rode through the tall, timbered mountain country. All right, you've come far enough to stop where you are, mister. All right. Get down off your horse. You're a stranger in these mountains, ain't you? You always shoot at strangers? Nobody passes here. This is Mr. Hoffman's camp. Well, look, I mean no harm to Mr. Hoffman. I'm just looking for another logging camp that belongs to Miss Mitchell. Mitchell? And you turn around and go back where you came. 
I've come too far for that. Axel, what's going on there? Stranger, Mr. Hoffman. He says he's going to that Mitchell. No, 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 no. Give me that rifle. All right, now. Now, shall we find what this is all about? I've got you covered, mister. Yeah, and my pistol is pointed at your man's head. Put your rifle down or he's dead. No. The rifle. Put it down. All right. Who are you? Makes no difference who I am. I told this man I was going to Miss Mitchell's camp, and that's where I'm going. No one is allowed to cross my land to get there. Then I'll go around. No, you won't. I own all the land surrounding our camp. All right. In that case, I'm going through. And Axel here will guide me. No. I think you will. Get up. Now, Mr. Hall, On your feet. What he says, Axel. Uh, uh. Mister, if you come to help her get those logs through, you're wasting your time. I'll stop you every way there is. All I know is I've come because a lady called me. Now get out of my way. Constipation is something people don't talk about much, but it can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, as close to natural acting as possible, and a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because pleasant-tasting chocolate at Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. Exlax is gentle. Next morning, it gives you the closest thing to natural action. And that's why many doctors and millions of people use Exlax with complete confidence. Exlax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently, overnight. Is Exlax in your medicine cabinet? Under the circumstances, the man called Axel was only too happy to direct me to Elizabeth's logging camp and then depart from my company. It was a typical camp with a sturdy main cabin, a cook shack, several other buildings for the work gang and the tool sheds. But something was wrong. There were no men working and felled logs lay scattered about on the ground. They should have been in stacks for the trip to the mills. I dismounted and walked toward the cabin. Paladin! Hey! Paladin! Elizabeth! Is it really you? Oh, oh I'm so glad to Elizabeth, see you. Elizabeth, it's good to see you too now here. Let me just have a look at you. I've changed, haven't I? Oh, well, you're just as beautiful as ever, but I never expected to see you in these surroundings. Well, this, this camp belonged to my father. He left it to me when he died six months ago. Oh. Is that why you left San Francisco so suddenly? Yes. Come on, come on inside <laughs> where it's warm. Oh, Paladin, I, I knew you'd come. Well, you know, if your neighbor had his way, I wouldn't be here. Oh, then you, you met Mr. Hoffman. Oh, yes. And the giant, what's his name, Axel? Axel Grundle. Yeah. Hoffman's woods boss. <laughs> sit down, sit down at the table and I'll pour you some coffee. Good, I could use some. Elizabeth, why did he try to stop me? Mr. Hoffman is the reason I sent for you. I need a man like you who knows his way around a gun. Here you are. Thank you. You see, after Father died, Hoffman bought up all the land that surrounds mine, and he won't let me cross his property to take my logs to the mill. Ah, uh, I see. Well, how many men do you have in your crew, Elizabeth? Oh. My crew quit when they heard Hoffman had hired Axel. That man is the devil himself, and he'll make killers out of every one of Hoffman's men. My men were simply afraid, that's all. Max, my woods boss, is still with me. And then there's Jeff. He was a very good friend of Father's, and now you. Well, we ought to hire some good men to work for you. No, no. Until I get paid for the logs on the ground, I can't afford any men. There's money owed on this land as it is. And if I default on the payments, Hoffman gets it. Well, how's that? He bought the bank stock. Oh. He's kept himself busy, hasn't he? (laughs) 
That noon, Elizabeth fixed lunch for us, and I met Jeff and Max for the first time. It was apparent that these two men had a deep respect for Elizabeth's father and had now transferred that devotion to his daughter. They had been trying to do everything they could to stop Hoffman from taking over the land, but they admitted that it was almost impossible. After lunch, Max showed me around the camp. Well, Max, what about Hoffman's woods boss? What kind of a man is he? Axel? Yeah. Oh, shucks, he ain't no woodsman. He's a sailor, worked out of Seattle. He's a track shot with a rifle, though, I know that. He started taking pot shots at the boys while they were working. Scared them all off that way. Uh Uh-huh. Then he's... He's strictly Hoffman's strong-arm man, is that it? Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I brought you out to my shed here. Here, come on in. Got something to show you. It's a hit under my bunk. Ah, Max, I'm... More interested in seeing what equipment you've got for stacking those logs. Eh, uh, first things first, Paladin. Yeah, uh, here she is. Well, <laughs> would you look at that? An old Jennings rifle. Mm, ain't she a beauty? Yeah. Still shoots, too. I figured you'd be all for going after Hoffman's gang with guns blazing, so I've been loading shells for it. Max, I'm not here to kill people. The job to be done is to get those logs to the mills. Can't be done, Paladin. We got no men. Even if we could stack them logs, there's no way to get them through. There's too much snow. No roads out, no engine, no team, nothing. Nothing but my old Jennings and that gun of yours. Maybe... Maybe there is a way to get the logs out. How? Oh. Ain't a man here can top a spar tree. I can't climb no more, and Jeff don't know how. Well, tell me, Max, how much equipment do you have for moving the logs? All of it. But that ain't the problem. We could move this whole mountain of trees, but not without a high rigor. Maybe I can do it, Max. You? Oh, you ain't no woodsman. I think I can trim a spar tree. Uh, Somehow I doubt that. But even if you can, how are we going to get them logs to the mill? Max, how long has the air been still like this? What kind of a question is that? The air. It's standing still. It's strange. How long? Oh, 10, 12 days. Why? I'm not sure. I was just thinking about something an old Indian chief told me one time. What was that? Well, I'd rather not say right now. Maybe he was wrong. Even if you've had embarrassing dandruff for years, you can get rid of it now in three minutes. That's all it takes with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Yes, unsightly dandruff's gone in three minutes with Fitch, quickest, easiest of all leading shampoos. What's more, using Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away. Just apply in the unique Fitch manner. Before you wet hair, rub in one minute. This way, Fitch shampoo penetrates right down to the scalp. Next, add water. Lather one minute to wash every trace of dandruff out of your hair. Then rinse one minute. All that loosened dandruff goes down the drain. In three minutes with Fitch, one rubbing, one lathering, one rinsing, dandruff's gone. At the same time, gentle Fitch can leave your hair up to 35% brighter. To get rid of dandruff problems forever, brighten hair too. Use Fitch regularly. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today, only 59 cents. Below. Miss Elizabeth, I never seen nothing like it. You told me that man was a gunman. Only if he has to, Max. Mr. Paladin's a good man to have around. Mm, sure is, ma'am. There's only one thing. What's that? I don't agree with where he picked that spar tree. Why? Why, it's too close to that old dry riverbed. If we're going to stack logs, let him get closer to the road where we can get a team up here come springtime and get him out. Springtime's too late, Max. It's now or never. All right, Max, done. Send up that block and ropes, and we'll stack the logs. What's the use of it? Do what he says, Max. Come on, Max. Move. It wasn't easy to get Max to agree to stack the logs where I wanted them, but finally the job was done. Now it was just a question of wait and hope. This went on for a week. 
Max and Jeff were getting edgy. It was all Elizabeth and I could do to keep Max from trotting down to Hoffman's place with his old Jennings rifle. But finally it came, what I had been waiting for. The Chinook wind. It comes, some people say, out of an old Indian's dreams. Others say it's the devil's breath on a particularly bad day. All I know is it came in dry and hot, and it lasted for two days. Dog got it, Paladin, you was right. A Chinook wind, it's working. That snow's melting like it was summertime. Look at that water come down. Paladin! Well, that's Jeff. Where'd he been, anyway? I sent him down the riverbed. You were right, Paladin. Hoffman's onto our plan. We've got Axel and his men building a log jam down below. According to law, he can claim every log that floats down there and stops on his property. Concern him, Paladin. Let's go down there and shoot them all dead. Max, if you don't settle down... Paladin, you can't stop the logs from going now. The water's rising so fast they'll be starting. Wait a minute. Max, how much black powder do you have? Enough to blow this mountain up. We use it for blasting out tree stumps. Good. What are you going to do? Jeff, do you know how to use a pike? Sure do. All right, then. Now, you make a skid jam here. And when you hear a shot fired from down below, start the logs down. Will you do it? You bet I will. All right, come on, Max. Let's get that black powder. Higginbotham here. We will now commence our lesson in stereophonic reproduction. <clears throat> Listen to the call of the spotted bill snicker on ordinary stereo. <coughs> now then, on a Columbia Stereo One phonograph. <coughs> Obvious difference, what? The Columbia stereophonic system really causes all others to blush. For it is not composed of just a few separated speakers. Columbia is the originator and exclusive purveyor of stereo projection. Only Columbia fills every inch of a room with real, lifelike sound. Now, when I was bird watching with the Duchess of... <laughs> but let that pass. You simply must hear the Stereo One phonograph by Columbia. Ask your Columbia phonograph dealer for a demonstration. And, chaps, portables are priced as low as $39.95. Consoles commence at $129.95. Lost that bird. <laughs> There they are, Paladin, sure enough. Yeah. Hey, those timbers where they'll count the most. Look, that axle's right in the middle where we got to plant this powder. How are we going to move him? I know, I'll shoot him from here. No, if they hear the shot, they'd start the logs from up above. Now, listen carefully. Yes, Paladin. Max, I'll draw Axel off the jam they've built. Now, while I'm busy with him, you plant the black powder out there. Can you do it? You bet I'll do it. Right smack in the center, all them logs that got stacked up. That's right. Then get off the log jam in a hurry. I'll throw a shot at it and blow it up. All right, Paladin. Good luck to us. Right. Hey, you. You, Axel. Who called my name? I did. You. What do you want? I come to fight you. I hear you were the toughest man ever to go to sea. You scum. I'll fight you. This time without a pistol at my head. I'll kill you. I'll break you in two. Oh, no, you won't, my friend. John Axel, use your gun. My bare hands, I'll kill this man. Get out of the way, Axel. I'll shoot him. My bare hands, I will. Oh, you. Lord, I... I killed him. Yeah. You killed your own man. I didn't. I... Well, I, I never meant this to go so far. It, it, it was a mistake. Will they hold me for murder? Yeah, I suppose they will. Even Axel had a right to live. Paladin, that shot. You started the logs. All right, get off the jam, Max. Can you see where I put the powder? Yes, I can see it, but get out of the way. Paladin, here comes the logs. Shoot, shoot quick. All right, Max. You made it, Paladin. You made it. Look at them logs go through. Hey, 
Hey, boy, sit down. Oh, why sit down? Want to learn baseball? Sit down. Oh, he saw what, uh... Hey, boy, figure to take many bats, ball, bird cage, run around very much and learn that way, not sit in stuffy room. Hey, boy, if I'm going to teach you, we're going to start at the beginning. Ooh. Now, <sighs> come in. Oh, yes, uh, bring it in. Just set it down, Miss Wong. Now, hey, boy, here's how the whole Hello, thing... Hello, hey, boy, what you doing here? Oh, uh, learning to play baseball. Why? Oh, maybe get to be uh, president of Imperial Dragon Club. Oh. Miss Wong. Yes, I go now. Now, hey, boy, listen to this. Yes, sir. Baseball is played by two teams. Hey, boy, you're not going to make it. Brother, this miserable cold and my sinuses. Haven't you heard about Dristan? Dristan decongestant tablets not only help drain all eight sinus cavities, critical areas of colds infection, but circulating through the blood, Dristan reaches all congested areas. In one fast-acting, uncoated, three-layer tablet, Dristan, for the first time, combines a decongestant to shrink all swollen membranes, relieve pressure and pain, an exclusive anti-allergent, to help keep breathing passages dry and clear. Pain relievers to ease body aches, reduce fever. Vitamin C to help build body resistance. This is Dristan. Today, Dristan is widely imitated, but the exclusive Dristan formula cannot be duplicated. For real relief from colds, misery, and sinus congestion, there is nothing, nothing like Dristan decongestant tablets. Gun will travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Roth, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun Will Travel by Tom Hanley. Featured in the cast were Barney Phillips, Lou Krugman, Ralph Moody, and Virginia Christine. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs> <laughs>